A man named Jin Sok moves into a new home with his mother, father, and his older brother Yu Sok. Jin's voice is heard narrating how much he deeply admires his older brother, who excels at everything in life. However, Yu once suffered a car accident which injured his left leg and left him with a limp. As the brothers unpack, their father warns them against entering a particular room, as it contains the belongings of the previous owner. Meanwhile, Jin starts hearing suspicious noises coming from the restricted room, though his family dismiss his claims. Jin often experiences nightmares and takes psychiatric drugs on a daily basis. That night, Yu takes Jin outside in the rain to get some fresh air. Jin witnesses as his older brother is being kidnapped by a group of men that dump him into a van and drive away. Jin only manages to catch a glimpse of the vehicle's plate number and rushes home to notify his parents. Upon the detective's arrival, Jin is questioned about the kidnapping incident. He informs the detectives that he could not see their faces clearly, although he proceeds to give them the license plate number instead. The detectives reveal that no vehicle with such plate number exists and argue that he must have read it wrong. Days and nights pass as the family searches for Yu. Nineteen days later, Yu suddenly returns home, however, with no memory of what happened during the time he was kidnapped. That night, Jin notices Yu leaving the room and hears the gate closing behind him. The next morning over breakfast, Jin mentions about Yu leaving the house that night, but his older brother denies it. Jin further notices Yu limping from his right leg instead of his usual left leg. One night, Jin secretly follows his older brother when he leaves the house. He discovers that Yu can in fact walk normally without limping. In a building, Yu meets up with a group of suspicious men who appear to have some dealings with him and address him as their boss. Jin recalls seeing two of the suspicious men in their house before, who had posed as detectives investigating his brother's kidnapping. As he proceeds to secretly follow his brother, he suddenly loses sight of him. Yu emerges behind him and knocks him unconscious. The next morning, Jin wakes up in his room, startled to see his older brother. Jin suspiciously confronts him about that night's incident, but Yu appears unaware of his claims and denies having left the house that night. Yu further insists that Jin is feeling paranoid as a result of failing to take his medication regularly. Jin recalls forgetting to take his pills the previous day, therefore, initially dismisses his suspicions about his older brother. Jin however recalls an earlier conversation with Yu that does not add up. He eventually confirms his doubts about him and discovers that Yu is in fact not his real brother. He informs his mother about Yu's suspicious behavior and suggests they follow him when he steps out at night. Later that night, Jin wakes up and heads downstairs for some water. He overhears his mother on a call with Yu, informing him that Jin already figured out that he is not his real brother. Jin eventually becomes aware that his supposed mother, his father and brother, are complete strangers pretending to be his family. Shocked by his revelation, he instantly escapes from the house and gets to a police station. Jin reports the whole situation and explains to the police that he had been abducted by strangers who pretended to be his family. Baffled by his claims, the police fail to believe Jin's story. Though Jin believes the current year is 1997 and he is a young man in his early 20s, the police reveal that it is actually the year 2017, which means he is currently 41 years old. Jin observes the calendar which shows that it is in fact 2017 and confirms it through the existence of modern technology around. A reflection of himself in a mirror further confirms that he is not really as young as he thought, which leaves him questioning his own perception of reality. When the police dismiss his claims as delusional, Jin is left with no other alternative and heads back to the house, hoping to get a clear explanation from the people he believed were his family. Upon arriving, he finds the door to the room he was restricted from entering, wide open. Jin walks in and finds a depiction of a murder crime scene with fake blood and music playing on the radio. Unable to understand the meaning behind it, his supposed family arrives and Yu reveals the truth. It becomes apparent that 20 years ago in 1997, a mother and her daughter were murdered in that same room. The police failed to catch the person responsible, even after countless attempts through the years. However, the victim's family hired people to investigate the case again, and years later, they managed to track down the culprit, who is revealed to be Jin. They abducted Jin and severely tortured him for days to uncover the truth, however, 
Jin insisted he had no recollection of the murder. A psychiatrist was then hired to help further and revealed that Jin suffered a distressing event around 1997. The event was so traumatic, that Jin chose to block out and erase all his memory associated with the event. The psychiatrist attempted to use hypnosis to recover the erased memory, but to no avail. The psychiatrist eventually suggested they bring Jin back to 1997 through hypnosis, which would enable him to live again the last moments of his happy life, before the traumatic event he has no memory of happened. The psychiatrist posed as the father, and Yu, whose real name is Choi, recruited a professional actress as the mother. They figured out if they could re-enact the events of the murder, Jin would be able to recover his memories. The restricted room was all along being used for the reenactment of the murder scene, and the initial plan was intended to conclude that night when it was raining. However, Choi was unexpectedly arrested by the police for assault and fraud. He eventually bribed the police and returned home 19 days later. However, the three were forced to keep up the act while they waited for another rainy night to properly reenact the night of the murder. A few days later, Jin's hypnosis started to wear off, and therefore, he started to gradually grow suspicious of them until now, eventually figuring out the truth. Back in the present, Jin still insists he is innocent. While the two are on a car ride, Jin dashes out of the moving van and narrowly avoids the oncoming traffic. Choi pursues him in a van for some time, until he suddenly crashes into a tree and sustains a serious injury to the head. Jin appears relieved and turns to leave the scene, but shortly after, he is hit by an oncoming truck. While lying on the ground, memories from 1997 start to resurface. He recalls being on a car ride with his real parents and his older brother, Yu. They later get into a car accident that kills his parents and leaves Yu in a critical condition. Six months later, Jin has difficulty getting the funding for Yu's surgery, due to a financial crisis in the country. After numerous failures to find a job online, he receives a message from an anonymous user offering him money to kill a mother, but he must leave her two children unharmed. Jin is initially hesitant to accept the offer, but considering the urgency of his brother's surgery, he eventually accepts the offer. The anonymous user provides an address, and when he arrives at the house, Jin is unable to bring himself to go through with the murder. He decides to leave, but the woman's daughter sees him and starts screaming uncontrollably. In a desperate struggle to stop the girl and her mother from screaming, Jin accidentally stabs the two of them and kills them both. Filled with guilt, Jin proceeds to leave the house, but a little boy emerges and asks about his mother. Jin tells the little boy to go back to sleep, promising to bring home his mother and sister. The little boy does as instructed and Jin turns to leave the house. However, he notices a family portrait and discovers that the family belongs to his brother's doctor, and the doctor was the anonymous user who hired Jin to kill his wife. Jin meets up with the doctor, demanding to know why he would have his own family killed. The doctor explains that he had taken out multiple insurance policies on his wife, and her death would prevent his children from ending up homeless. The doctor finds out about her daughter's death and attempts to kill Jin. However, the doctor eventually slips and falls down from the rooftop. The three tragic deaths left Jin extremely traumatized. Back in the present time, after getting hit by an oncoming truck, Jin wakes up in a hospital. He finds Choi, who survived the earlier car crash, about to poison him. Jin tells Choi to inform the family's victim that he is truly sorry. Surprised by the fact that Jin has regained his memory, Choi asks him why he chose to kill the mother and her daughter, and then inquires if by any chance, the husband hired him to do it. Choi reveals to Jin that he is actually the doctor's son, that little boy whom he spared 20 years ago. After the deaths of his entire family, his relatives took all the money and abandoned Choi in an orphanage. Choi has since felt bitter towards the person responsible for his family's deaths, and promised he would exact revenge at any cost. Feeling remorseful, Jin takes the blame for all the murders and denies that Choi's father hired him to do it. However, Choi fails to believe his claims. Choi then wishes Jin the best and walks out. Consumed by guilt, Jin eventually injects himself with poison and dies. Meanwhile, after Jin's confession, Choi appears to have finally fulfilled his personal goal in life and found the person who murdered his mother and sister. 
Choi resorts to jumping out of the hospital window and dies. Back in 1997, Jin is standing at the river. Five-year-old Choi approaches him and offers him a lollipop. After Jin declines, the boy runs to his family, who are shown to be the doctor with his wife and daughter. The family walks away happily as little Choi smiles and waves at Jin. Hope you've enjoyed today's recap. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.